Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for taking time out of your day to join us for this electrical design with AutoCAD webinar. Before I pass things over to Brad Strong, who is one of our technical specialists here at NextGen, I want to remind you of a couple of things. First, we are recording this and we will make it available to you after the fact. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop them in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen controls and we will get those answered or you can hold off and wait until our dedicated Q&A time at the end. Lastly, if you're new or you've been around here for a while, let me briefly introduce who we are. NextGen Solutions specializes in design and manufacturing. We have solutions from software to services, implementation, consulting, training, post processors, everything in between. We've been around for quite a while, so you may also know us as NextGen Cam. We originally started out kind of with a focus on the cam side of things, but then as we grew and our customers kind of grew with us, we've expanded to be all encompassing and help our customers now take uh, an idea in their head all the way to a completed product in their hand and everything in between. So one of the ways that we do this is through software. And so we are an Autodesk Gold partner. You can kind of see here on the screen, a few of our accomplishments. So just briefly to brag about ourselves a little, we are uh, the number one CAM partner for Adidas six of the last seven years. Earlier this year, we were delighted uh, to be named their top service delivery partner, and we are working hard to retain that title. Uh, we're also a gold learning partner, and if you've been around here for a while, you know that training is a big deal, that we really believe in that. Um, and one of the ways that we do training is through lots of events like this with webinars and other best practices and things like that that we hold throughout the year. So with all of that, Brad, take it away. Hi, everyone. This is Brad Strong and with NextGen Solutions. My background goes into, uh, I go, I've go. i been doing AutoCAD itself by um, since AutoCAD 10, when we in fact numbered by the, not by years, but just by, so I've been doing AutoCAD forever. And then AutoCAD Electrical probably meant the last six years. And um, so I work through, I work with, I go on site to customers, I teach in the classroom, I teach by Zoom, and, we, and I help customers also with um, if they have problems with their schematics panels. And so where I like to start is talk, talk a little bit about the design methodology with AutoCAD Electrical. Um, first thing you do if you had a project and you want to get it into AutoCAD Electrical is um, you create a project and the project is a group of drawings, which includes your schematic drawings, your control panel drawings, and then reports. And reports would be things like your bill of materials, your point to point wiring. So the design methodology is that you design your schematic. That information is then extracted into a panel drawing and then you put those components in your panel. And then when your panel is done, you have design iterations, you go back and change your schematic. Uh, that automatically changes the information in your panel and then you get it checked. And when you're, you got it where you want it, then you can extract data like a bill of materials, stuff for your ERP system, um, components from two wiring for the person that's going to wire your panel, and then a set of drawings for your manufacturing floor for your technicians. So that's um, the design methodology. And I kind of, I have, then I, uh, through AutoCAD Knowledge Database, there's this kind of roadmap about where you would go with AutoCAD Electrical. And you start with your basics, and I'll kind of jump back and forth and um, pull up a, my AutoCAD Electrical software. And, and when you think about the basics of AutoCAD, you're looking at AutoCAD Electrical has basic AutoCAD in it. If you're familiar with AutoCAD Architectural, Mechanical, industrial they all have autocad so if i want to draw circles lines and squares here's my here's the basics of autocad i can go in here i can draw circles i can i can uh, draw a, make a rectangle that, that represents my panel where it gets into the specialization of autocad electrical is that you have projects and on the left here i have a project open and this project consists of like I said, three types of drawings. One would be a schematic drawing, and I'll just kind of click on the, a typical schematic drawing. Right here, a schematic drawing consists of components 
schematic components, wires to put those together, um, wire number information, PLCs, push buttons. That's a schematic drawing. And from that schematic, I'm kind of going down that roadmap. From that schematic drawing, you would um, then have a, a panel drawing. These are the same components that are in that schematic, but they're they're in panel panel drawing form, which is the physical size. So if I have a circuit breaker in my schematic, here's a circuit breaker um, in in mechanical form, so that when my technician goes to build this panel, he has a bill of materials, he has a panel layout, and he knows where to put the circuit breakers, where to put the PLC. And that's the that's phase two of the design. AutoCAD Electrical all also lets you design your panel, grab that information and build a schematic from a panel. So you can go either way. And then the, the third one I talked about would be a, a report. And this is in drawing format, but I put this bill of materials from this project onto a drawing. And it says, we'll just zoom in. I have two um, connectors, one, one, one eaten circuit breaker. So the guy that builds the panel can, can pull up the set of drawings and say, okay, item, item one is my connector. Item two is my um, circuit breaker. So that's the three type of drawings. Now I'll jump back into our roadmap of starting with the basics of AutoCAD Electrical Interface. Then I create a project and the project is going to hold my group of drawings. So the project contains the report drawings, the schematic drawings, the panel drawings. So then that's holding my drawing together. Step two on my roadmap is creating those drawings. So I want to start a new schematic with an AutoCAD Electro. I'm um, starting with my title block, my company title block. Um, and naming that drawing is the control panel, the control panel schematic. And then I build my schematic and I'll, I'll kind of jump back into that, into my AutoCAD saying, here's my schematic. So I'm building the schematic from scratch. scratch. I, uh, I can, as far as I go further down the road, we'll get into details about how to build schematics, the importance of them, and then how that information ties into uh, into building a panel to into in how AutoCAD Electrical shares information from the schematic to the panel to the reports. It's a it's a database, but it's it's a it's a, a real time saving feature for AutoCAD Electrical. That if I put a push button in, I assign a manufacturer for that. That information gets passed on to my panel. If I change the manufacturer, the component, I, it also changes changes in my panel. So um, a lot of error checking and checking you as far as um, design integrity that you don't have some, it'll tell you if you put a push button in your schematic and you don't have that put in a panel somewhere. So there's error checking. So phase three of my design methodology is that I'm creating that schematic. And then we'll go back to, back to my map. So within a schematic, I'm, I'm inserting push buttons, PLCs, lights, um, microprocessors, circuit, circuits. And from there, those are what they're called schematic, sim, schematic, and then there you could have terminals. And from and connecting all, all these together are wires. If you're familiar with creating schematic, AutoCAD Electrical will jump back into that. They, your wires have information, and that information can be extracted for um, purchasing. So if I go back to my schematic drawing, you'll see uh, components have information. If I right, if I right click on that, this component is a motor control coil. It has a manufacturer eaten here. And so that information can be extracted. The thing that connects components together are wires. Those two also have information. If I say what 
Look at that wire. That's a red 18 gauge wire. All that information can be extracted as far as ordering the, the wire, wiring the panel together. All that information is, is, in, is held within the drawings and can be output as a report, which is very useful. So on that roadmap, that's where my wires come in. When I'm connecting everything together. The cross-referencing that it talks about here is um, that from drawing to drawing, you have components that, uh, my example would be like a, a relay and a coil. You may have a relay on one side, one drawing, and a coil on the other that gets, when you put voltage on a relay, it closes the coil for you. And those may be on two different drawings. You may have a set of 10 drawings and, and AutoCAD Electrical will tell you these drawings are, these components are connected together on different drawings. You have, you have signals that go from one drawing to another. That's all connected together and AutoCAD maintains that information um, through report. You, know, you can look at reports, you can uh, jump from drawing to drawing with a thing called Surfer. If I put a push button in my schematic. If I go to Surfer, it will say, this push button is in this schematic and it's located here on your control, on your panel. So you have a way of going from drawing to drawing and knowing how everything's connected together, how everything's related. And then while I'm working on my schematic, you have the ability to edit components. I'm saying, I'm talking about schematic components. You can change manufacturer, you can move these around, you can you can put one push button in and, and, and create 10 copies of it all over your drawing instead of having to put a push button in one manually one at a time. And as you move it from your ladder on one place, it automatically renumbers it. It does automatically a wire number and an automatic component number. So then after my schematic is done, I've copied, moved, put all my components in there. From there, we're gonna go and we're gonna build our panel. And that's, you're going down the roadmap and we'll, I'll just pull up a quick panel drawing. Here's a panel drawing. This is showing you, if I open the door on, the, on my control station cabinet, here are my different components in there. A circuit breaker, a power supply, motor control, motor starters, control relays, put on a DIN rail. All that information can be extracted. You got your terminal blocks over here to wire it all up. So then you're, from your schematic, you're building, um, you're building that panel. And, and, and AutoCAD tells you, okay, your schematic has five circuit breakers. And as you put them in, AutoCAD does a check saying that's, it marks things that you've added, marks things you haven't added from your schematic. So that's the design methodology for building a panel. And then from there, we'll uh, look at our roadmap. I'll jump and uh, so I go from my panel layout, I'll get, I got that done, physical layout, and then I go to reports. And here is where I can do a bill of materials, wire to wire. I can do wire, I can send a report to my a label printer, get labels for all my wires, and then you generate your you generate reports, you can put them on drawings, you can put them on an Excel spreadsheet, you can do a, a kind of a CSV file that could be put into your company's database. And then the the final part is printing your project out you know, as a plot file or a PDF. And when we talk about a beauty of AutoCAD Electrical is that if you do a PDF set of drawings, a person can navigate those just by, we'll get out, I'll, I'll get into a little bit of what the surfer is, but the surfer is a way to show, jump around from a, your panel to your schematic and back and forth. And instead of, when you do a report, that PDF also has that linking of hyperlinks, you, I would call them. Is that if I link on a 
a switch, it'll take them to where that switch is located on another drawing in a PDF format. And someone doesn't have to have AutoCAD electrical to be able to navigate your set of drawings as long as they're, they're online and in PDF format. Now, it's, so that's kind of the overview. Now I'll talk about the, uh, I, know, I will jump back and forth. We talk about the features and benefits of AutoCAD electrical. AutoCAD Electrical out of the box comes with an extensive library of components. And, and for me to just say, that's great, here's the extensive library of components. I would prefer to jump back into the, uh, jump back into a schematic and um, I'll, I'll show you here that I showed you the basics of AutoCAD. Here's, here's, here's uh, drawing boxes, but then you get into building a schematic and here's a, a menu of things you can do within a schematic, which is wire things up. Um, but I think my point here was that we have an extensive library of components. So if I go, um, I want to, I'm looking for a push button. I can say my catalog browser, and it pops up on another screen. So I'll drag it over, and I, I go, okay, I'm looking for push buttons. And PB for push buttons, right here. If I just want, if I if I say search all my push buttons, here's the extensive library of catalogs that AutoCAD Electrical comes with. That's 116,428 push buttons. But if I just want to look for an Eaton push button, I'll put an Eaton, and I'll search for those. And here is 2,167 push buttons. Meeting. And I want an illuminated one, so I'm going to say, give me that illuminated one. It's normally open. I go back here to my drawing, and now I'm putting in that push button onto my, into my schematic. I'm find a nice place for it. I'm going to put that into the, right there. Automatically loads the uh, manufacturer. I can add a description in, in uh, like a PLC start button. It will turn it to caps for me, which is beautiful. Um, now it's going to get into details, installation, location codes. All this stuff is information you can add to a single component. So I'm kind of getting into the details of building a schematic, but that was just to show you the extensive library of components that AutoCAD Electrical has. And you'll find out that he, with the also with the extensive library of components, let's go back to where I am. Um, it may not have everything you like, so you are allowed you're allowed to build your own custom components. You're allowed to build your own circuits. If there's a circuit, it's a real time saver as far as you you you. you spend a little time up front and this give me a second to go back into the drawing. And I'll talk about building a library of custom components and, and building a library of custom circuits. So just let me jump back into that schematic. Here's my, here's my, I, I, I browse the Auto, AutoCAD catalog browser. I can also put my custom components in that catalog and search from that way. But you also have an icon menu. And this icon menu, which is AutoCAD's standard library of components, which has push buttons, selector switches, you can see fuses. This is the, you know, if you think about 116,000 different push buttons, you also have tens of thousands of fuses, circuit breakers, timers, motor control. So that's the extensive library of components. But what you'll find out is that I've worked with companies and every company has custom components, custom library stuff. So if I just look at like, here's PSI, which is a company I did some work for. They wanted a, a frequency drive motor controllers that with a, a little time up front, you build your own custom components. So I'll just show you that this is a frequency drive quite extensive component, but that's treated just like a push button that I put into my circuit. So there I have a, a frequency drive. I can wire that up. Um, that same component 
we built in that you could put in your panel and um, physically the physical size of it. So that's that's custom library components, which I find customers use most of the time because you haven't if, if you're just building a simple circuit, a push button, a couple of lights, but every company has their own uh, way of doing motor control, doing conveyor belts, and so they have their custom, and I find that the customization of AutoCAD electrical is one of the best features I see out there. So jump back into there. Uh, I'll just, I'll touch on one more thing is that the custom, yeah, custom circuit, you can also do custom, have custom circuits. So you, if you have a circuit that you use over and over again, you have a library component you just click on it'll drop that circuit right in your uh, right in your schematic so a real time saver is custom circuits um, something that you use all the time you just build it may be very complex 25 components 100 components and then you build that custom circuit it's just a menu click away of at putting that into a new schematic and another real time saver with AutoCAD is the repeatability. Like I said, you have a library of, of circuits, even in a, a schematic that you have, there's four of the same, you have four different motors, four different motor starters. It's the same circuit. You can draw it once, copy it four times, you have four of those circuit, circuits. And that's a real time saver. The other time saver, I We'll step right down here. Next is the that you can duplicate your projects. I've had customers that they do one project for Ford, um, they build a paint spraying machine, and then Chrysler wants that same paint spraying machine. So you have a hundred drawings, schematics, but Chrysler wants their name on the drawings and, and, and just a few modifications in the in the project. So you copy that. You copy that whole project over, which has all the bill material, the reports, and then you have a whole, yeah, instead of designing from square one or, or copying drawings in AutoCAD, renumbering your components, copying a project is, is easier than rebuilding the, the wheel. So, and then another feature is smart drawings, the schematics, the panels, and the reports, they're all linked together. I'll go back into my drawing just gave you an example of how things are linked together. Um, I'll, I'm going to show you my surfer command so that I know where this push button is used. I'll zoom in. I hope you can all see that well. I have a push button. If I right click on it, without getting into the details and teaching you how to design this, um, I go to my surfer command. Here's a Here's a, a list of what, it's on sheet four, line 207. Um, it's on sheet six, and I can say, go to that. I'm just gonna show you how I can find out where that push button is used on another drawing. If I say, go to, it's gonna say, save the drawing because I'm leaving it. And, get, and here's my, uh, here's my push button. I'm just gonna close that so we can see. I, I it just jumped jumped out of my schematic drawing, went to um, that push button in my panel and said, "There, there you go." So I'm gonna jump back to that control drawing over here. If I go control, and there's my push button. So now I no longer need this push button. I'm just gonna show you the the time saver and the error checking as I say. Let's get rid of that push button. Uh, and this is another, it would say, if I, if, I, if there's another component, another piece of this component that somewhere else it would say, say search for that, I'd say no. So now, um, if I do an update, if I update my project, it's gonna go out there on my panel and get rid of that push button out of my panel. I don't have to think about 
you know, I, I don't have to be the genius that knows where every push button, what panel that push button's put in. AutoCAD does it automatically. It eliminates it from my panel just because I erase it from my schematic. And also it eliminates it from the bill of materials. So when this pro, when I finished updating this project, two other drawings have been changed. I go back into my cabinet. That push button is now gone from this from this drawing. Bill of materials has been, has been updated. That's a real time saver and error checker from AutoCAD. So we're that's how AutoCAD pairs information from drawing to drawing. I I, I touched a little bit about the 3D compatibility that um, when you spend a little time up front and I put I built that frequency drive. There's a physical block that's going to go in my panel. Um, if you get advanced enough within AutoCAD, you can have your panel components that are inserted to be compatible with Inventor. And it's just a feature that um, I know that a lot of panel builders want their panels built in 3D. And so you can, you can tie that together. Now, that was kind of the overview and design methodology. Now I can touch a little bit about what projects are. And that projects are um, the database that holds all your drawings together, that holds your schematics, your panels, and your report drawings together. And like I said, the way that, that's the way AutoCAD Electrical knows that if I'm erasing this push button in my schematic, it's it's going to take that out of my panel for me. And it's going to take it out of my report for me. So the pro having a project of drawings. Um, the project is the way you can say that's my group of drawings that are all linked together. So that's what projects are. And then we'll get a, a little bit into uh, building the schematic. Jump back in. Good overview is to build my schematic that I, I start with a blank sheet. I put in a ladder, you know, if I, this is the way you, you work. There's my, there's my ladder. I can then insert a PLC into that. Again, I'm getting into a little bit ahead of myself, but um, then I'll put a PLC in there. Couple of details and things you'll figure out later. Input and input IO addresses. And I think that's a detail that uh, so then there's a there's a simple schematic. It's a PLC now with that PLC programmable logic controller. I can uh, add push buttons, build that up, and then uh, that's building a schematic. Uh, again, again, there's several ways to do it. You have an icon menu, inserting your fuses, your motor control, your pilot lights. I just want to pull the light in. Simple, simple way to uh, we're building a schematic and putting components in there. There's my PLC. So then, if I want to, let's kind of look back at the roadmap. I'm putting the components. I'm wiring things together. I'm copying component if I need to copy components. You can easily do that. Here's my receptacle. I need another one of those. Easily copy components. Now I have two receptacles. I'm not redrawing that. If it had a manufacturer number, it would copy that manufacturer number. It automatically rewired it for me and put a new component number. That's a, a way to copy components. You're going to wire things together. These look like lines in AutoCAD, but they are actually wires with smart information. Um, you can put signal names on those. You can change the wire type. And that signal name, you know, I, I know with a lot of PLCs, you want your uh, 
for this data bus is you want your signal well named and that all of the information could be entered into AutoCAD and then to maintain with the integrity when you do reports, you know signal names, you can surf to where that signal name goes to on another drawing. Like right here's an arrow that says this goes to line 200, another drawing. Plenty of smart information there. So I'll just jump back. Putting in wire, copying components, copying circuits. I said another real time save is that if I want to duplicate a circuit on the same drawing, um, it's just a matter of copying and pasting it. Extensive library components from AutoCAD, catalog components, custom components built by you, the user. You, you have one, you have 10 designers across the country. They're all building components. You, they're all shared in a library where we share these components and put your, you're not duplicating efforts. And then again, custom circuits built by the user. Those come into a, those come from a library too. And then custom name is where I think I showed you where um, I built that frequency drive. It's now a menu item that um, anyone, anyone else in my company that's using AutoCAD Electrical, they have access to my custom frequency drive and it's on their menu too. Um, and that's the beauty of AutoCAD Electrical. Building a control panel. The second, that, the second phase of your design is building that control panel. You've got your schematic done. Now you're going to look at your control panel. And I think I just put a PLC in my schematic. Let's take a look at that, how we would grab that information from the schematic and put that into one of our panels. So I'll pull up, a, I'll pull up this, this control panel. I, this control panel, I, I've got far, quite a way long in this project, but I'm missing that. I, I said, I just ran, I need another PLC to put in here. So I put one in my schematic, but now how, how would I add that to my panel drawing? I would go into my, um, I'd go to my panel, here's my panel menu. I would go to my, to my schematic list. And I say, show all, here's all the components that are in my, my previous schematic of up to date that I've built. Fuses, and if you see, I said mark existing, all these X's are components in my schematic that I've added. If I say mark existing and hide existing, here's that, that PLC I just added right there. I can't add it right now because it does not have a manufacturer, but um, let's just try this. But so then I just added a little power supply here. So that's so that right there is a limit switch that I got the manufacturer uh, catalog number, extracted all the information from a limit switch that I put in my schematic. And I say, okay. And here's where the surfer command, I can close this and mark that limit switch. I took that limit switch off my list of things I need to put in there. But here's a, it's almost like a to-do list. I need to build, build my cabinet and here's all the stuff I need that I have in my schematic that needs a place to go. And this, by this location code, I know that this goes in my operator, st operator station cabinet. This goes in the cabinet. This one goes on the floor. So. So now I have a limit switch here in my cabinet. If I if I right click on that, um, I have to have a surfer command. It's on sheet five. I say go to. And that one, I, and I'll just show. Let's just do another one. Let's do the surfer command on this PLC. PLC 203A. It's on sheet four, line two, 2047. If I say go to, I quickly save that drawing because I made changes to it. I say close. Here's my PLC in schematic form. 
and then let's so that's that's building a panel from the stuff that's in your schematic you can also go back to uh, that panel and use your icon menu by inserting you know, things that are in a if i go to back to my panel I'll pull that up real quick i can also look at my icon menu i can uh, put push buttons i can grab something from the catalog so now i'm putting a push button on my into my panel because i need i need this panel i need another push button same i can reverse the process i go back into my schematic and say what is in my panel that's not in the schematic and it will tell me you put in an allen bradley push button right here item 21 now you put that in your schematic so if i if i was to surf for that it's only going to show it in this drawing let's jump back into my roadmap and then i also i said the, the quite detailed that i think the 3d blocks of things that you can also uh, do 3D components in your control panel instead of just a flat uh, 2D component. Next would be um, so I, I built my schematic, I built my panel. Now I've got, uh, now I can create things like a bill of materials. And then I'll just run through what the most common would be a bill of materials. So I'll show you how that we can put that report to a spreadsheet and show you how it's done. So jump back in. With Jump back into this. Say, if I just want to build materials from this drawing, I can say, uh, I made it my panel. I go right here. I've got, I've got a panel report. I want to build materials for just this drawing. So if I, if I want to put something on this drawing, it shows me just the components that are in this, um, on this panel that I have to build. I'm building a. Uh, Bill of materials. And here's my bill of materials. And I can uh, add the time and date, title lines on that. And there's a, uh, puts, the, puts the things on it. And here's my choice. I can put it on the drawing and can save it to a file. So if I just said, let's just say, let's put this on drawing. And I'll drop it over here. Maybe a little hard to see, but this is a bill of material just for this panel. I extracted all this information of the panel I built and created myself a bill of material. So that's some of your reports. Other reports you can see um, AutoCAD has a great feature that a thing called automatic reports when you ever when you finish a project you have to create 10 reports and you know, one goes to purchasing one goes on your drawing one goes to pdf format you create a custom automation file that creates those 10 reports for you save your time click that button do it once set up your reports and then that's automatic let's see why there, so that's how you do reports and, you, and your choices are CSV, put them on a drawing, and pen, both for schematic and panel reports. And then there's some another benefit, we just talked about the overall benefits of uh, some design automation is um, adding new type, updating your title blocks. So you add new drawings, you don't have to go into each title block and renumber it. AutoCAD will automatically number your title blocks. It will update them with drawing description. Another feature, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I'm short on time, but um, I will go through this quickly that you can have a, a spreadsheet. And I'll pull up my spreadsheet. You can build a spreadsheet 
this is quite there's a lot of information but this spreadsheet has like has plc numbers has push buttons terminal blocks um lights switches from all that autocad will look at this this will bring this spreadsheet and build you build your circuit for you so there's some design automation features there that um, if you get good at it and you're you don't like to spend a lot of time in your drawing just um renaming push buttons and, and renaming things and you're good with the spreadsheet you can change information in your spreadsheet import import that information to a drawing and create automatically create drawings Likewise, you can take information from a drawing, extract that into a spreadsheet, modify the information, bring the spreadsheet back in your drawing and it'll update your drawing for you. So sometimes it's easier just to, uh, instead of going into a drawing and going to each component and saying, I want this power to be now um, motor power, you can modify information in the spreadsheet. So, just a quick demo on the uh, circuit to spreadsheet. I'm going to start with a blank sheet. I can actually do this from anywhere. I can, uh, I'm, I'm in my schematic. Um, got your panel, and then you got import, export data. And this is where um, you can go get information to update your drawing from a spreadsheet and take, extract your going to a spreadsheet, but the PLC IO utility is that spreadsheet I just showed you that you can put PLC information in there and line by line from your PLC input output points. Um, you can take that information and bring it in and create your own drawing. So if I do a PLC IO utility, um, there's my spreadsheet name. And I say open. So you set this up once. I just want to double check there and go okay. I right, have these drawings. I'm just going to create a drawing called one. Sheet number 10. And then this is where the automation you automatically number your sheets. And I say start. And so now, um, you'll see AutoCAD pull in my company title block, drop in from that spreadsheet. It knows all this information, what, where to put push buttons line by line in my PLC. It adds all that information. It's going to create, uh, put in three PLCs and create three drawings. And uh, it pauses between drawings, makes sure what I want to name the next drawing and say start. This drawing number two. Kind of a nice feature with AutoCAD that if you get really good at it and you want to automate some of the design process, this, this um, spreadsheet to creating a circuit is a, a really nice feature and something we touch a little bit in the fundamentals class to do this exercise, changing things, changing the spreadsheet. But then in the advanced class, we get a little bit more into uh, Customizing the databases and, and uh, knowing what all these AutoCAD blocks do and where AutoCAD gets its information from. Well, now if you look at my project, 10, 11, and 12 are three new drawings that I, I put in there. Um, created three drawings, added them to my project. Now I can go in there and I can, if I want to. Um, Modify this, just a couple tweaks and changes. I, if I, my other choice is to modify the spreadsheet, you know, I can put in a different manufacturer for this control relay in my spreadsheet. I can modify it here. If I, if I right click on that, you'll see that um, I could modify the manufacturer right here, or so I can modify it in my spreadsheet. Let's go back to our roadmap. Um, I talked about you can do circuit modification from a spreadsheet. You can extract that data, extract schematic information into a spreadsheet, change your spreadsheet, 
bring it back in. And then there's a, a thing called circuit builder, which is a way AutoCAD, if you have motor control circuits, it's, it's quite extensive to show you this demonstration, but if you do a lot of motor control, you put it in the specifications of your motor, and AutoCAD automatically designs the disconnect means, what wire gauge you need, everything you need to build that motor control circuit. Uh, it's, it's design automation. Um, so you don't have to, it, it does the calculations per uh, National Electric Code or IEEE. A little bit of the advanced training that we look at is customizing your title blocks, um, doing custom menu, 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 custom menuization, custom schematic symbols. Um, I think we'll just touch quickly on PL, if I, if I just say with PLC customization. Um, AutoCAD has an extensive library of PLCs. I'll just jump back into a, a PLC. Here's a here's a PLC out of the box from AutoCAD Electrical. The PLC in the advanced class, you'll, go to, you'll get into where you can uh, and know you have a certain custom PLC or you have a a microprocessor and you want you'll take a AutoCAD Electrical allow you to take this square, design your inputs and outputs, what, it, what comes in on the left, what goes out on the right. And that's what's called PLC custom, customization. And I, it's basically saying if, if AutoCAD doesn't have the PLC you use, you take one of theirs, you modify the inputs and outputs, you add, um, add more inputs, more outputs. After you're done, you put that in your library, you've got your PLC which is you buy from Festo, not Alan Bradley. So now the next person that gets into AutoCAD Electro, that new PLC is there for them. It's one you use all the time. Kind of like the frequency drive we designed because it wasn't in AutoCAD's library component. So there's a, you spend a little bit of time up front with AutoCAD Electro, building your library components, you save a lot of time in the future by just dropping things in and lining them up and then putting those physical things into your, into your panel. So back to PLC customization. And then the part of the advance is um, the extensive library of components that, that AutoCAD Electrical has. In the advanced class, you learn how to work with that library and add things to it such as pin wire pin wire and wire pins um the footprint that goes how, how that the catalog database and the panel footprint database those two tie together as far as tying your schematic and your panel your schematic symbol i'll call it and your panel footprint the catalog database ties those together so within the advanced training you learn how to how to edit those catalogs and, and those catalog databases, they're just access, access databases, but you work with them like they're a spreadsheet. You can edit those, you can add records to them. And again, that there's a little time up front, work with those databases and understanding those databases that save you a lot of time in the future. And then you also work with the electrical standards, which um, AutoCAD has several electrical standards, um, IEC and a, and a PA. Um, European standards, and I, I, I have customers that when they're designing a project, they'll go to the European standards and the AutoCAD library of symbols is set up for those standards. So if you're building a schematic and then this project's going to be um, in, in Europe, you're going to want to build the European standards. AutoCAD has those electrical standards built in, and with that comes the symbols that are the European standard for symbols. So that's a, a, a nice feature with all of that. So um, I would, this is the part, I don't know, Joy wants me to tell you about this, but we have different courses that and I teach you. We start with the fundamentals and I've had people in fundamentals that have come from never even use AutoCAD 
the people that are very familiar with AutoCAD Let's Go, but they need to know where, you know, how to, the concepts of building a project, how to use Surfer, the ins and outs. And then, like I said, from that, we go into advanced training, a two day course. I um, mean, the fundamentals of a three day course is very, a lot of hands on work, work at their exercise in advance. We get into more of um, the databases, how, when you change something in the database, how does that affect your components, your library of, of components? And then on site training, we've done that where I go, I can teach the fundamentals or advanced training on your site, or I can come in and I've gone to customers and say, you know, out of the box, it does this, but we really want to customize it for our site. We want our library. And so that's some on either you can do normal training or you can do on site custom training. 